Hey everyone, Mr. Shatter here to talk about the mean value theorem. Objective number one, to review the definition of increasing and decreasing functions. And number two, to examine what Mr. Schachter believes to be the second most influential theorem in all of calculus, the mean value theorem for derivatives. Let's not waste another second. Before we get to the mean value theorem, I'd like to consider a more sophisticated definition for increasing and decreasing. Uh, the first box basically states that if you have a function's, uh, you have an x value, and uh, you have another larger x value, if the y value for that larger x value is larger, then the original increases, right? So if x gets bigger, y gets bigger. And if the opposite is true, then it decreases. If x gets bigger and y gets smaller, that means the original function is decreasing. Also, using our knowledge from chapter 3 in derivative world, if a derivative is positive, that means the original increases, and if a derivative is negative, that means an original decreases. Let's try a problem. It says the graph of y equals 2x cubed plus 24x minus 18 is blank, and since the choices are all talking about increasing and decreasing, I probably want to take a derivative, right? When in doubt, derive it out. So this is 6x squared plus 24. Now, I know this term is always positive, right? And if I add 24 to a positive term, I know that my entire derivative will always be positive. And I know if my derivative is always positive, that means that choice A is true, that the original will always be increasing. It's time to consider the mean value theorem for derivatives. In order to consider the theorem, two things must be true. The first is that f of x must be continuous on every point in a closed interval A to B and f of x must be differentiable at every point on an open interval. The reason why we're considering differentiability on an open interval is because remember that limits are, or derivatives rather, are limits. And in order to take a derivative, you need a limit from the left and a limit from the right. And since we're talking about endpoints here, you don't really have a derivative from the left of a left endpoint or a right from a right endpoint. Um, we're going to only consider it on the open interval, the open interval, okay? If you have those two criteria satisfied, then there's at least one point C, at least one point C in the interval A to B, it's an x value, at which the derivative exactly at C, so f prime of C, which is the instantaneous rate of change, instantaneous rate of change, is equal to f of B minus f of A over B minus A, which is the average rate of change, average rate of change over the interval a to b, of course. So what this is basically saying is somewhere on this interval, the instantaneous rate of change equals the average rate of change. The average rate of change, remember, is the slope of the secant from a to b. From a to b, this is the average rate of change. So the slope of this, this secant line is equal to the slope of the curve um, over that interval a to b. And remember that the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the slope of the tangent, slope of the tangent. The mean value theorem basically states that there's at least one moment at which the slope of the tangent is equal to the slope of the secant, or the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the rate of change over the entire interval. Let's take a look at an example of the mean value theorem. Uh, it says show the function f of x equals x squared satisfies the mean value theorem, and then find a c to prove uh, that this, uh, it's going to be true. So let's first remind ourselves of the two criteria. So f of x equals x squared is definitely continuous on the closed interval 0 to 2, right? No proof necessary, we all know that. Additionally, f of x equals x squared is differentiable, is differentiable on the open interval a to b. Again, no proof necessary, that's very obvious, but we need to state those two facts. When you're doing a mean value theorem um, problem, we technically always begin by stating those two facts. Well, assuming that these are true, we can now go ahead and find the c. So f prime of c basically means find the derivative and plug in c. Well, I know the derivative of x squared is 2x, so I'm going to take 2x and I'm going to plug in c for x. I'm going to get 2c equals, that's 2c, not 2e, kind of looked like 2e, 2c equals. And then f of b minus f of a over b minus a is the average rate of change from 0 to 2. So that's f of 2 minus f of 0 over 2 minus 0, okay? And I know the function is uh, f of x equals x squared, right? So I know that f of 2 is equal to 4, f of 0 is equal to 0, and then 2 minus 0, of course, which tells me that 2c is going to equal 4 over 2, which 2c is equal to 2, and therefore c is equal to 1. 
So at, at exactly x equals 1, the instantaneous rate of change of the curve y equals x squared is equal to the average rate of change over the interval 0 to 2. It's really important to understand that the hypotheses of these theorems cannot be relaxed. This theorem, rather, not these theorems. It's just one theorem. Uh, that is to say that the function must be continuous and must be differentiable. Take, for example, this, the y equals x or absolute value of x curve, right? We know absolute value of x is not differentiable at 0. But we know it's continuous everywhere in this specific interval, negative 1 to 1. It's also differentiable everywhere from negative 1 to 1 except 0. But notice that the, the, uh, the line right here, which is the slope of the secant, is not possible to be parallel to the slope of the tangent because the slope of the tangent at 0 is undefined. So this tangent doesn't exist. It's not there. So we can't actually say that there is a c in that problem. Additionally, consider the greatest integer function. We know the greatest integer function right here has a discontinuity. So my tangent, that is mia, cannot be parallel to my secant because my tangent can't exist, because you can't take the derivative of something that's not continuous. So those two criteria must be satisfied. Here are a couple of examples of saying why these functions would not apply. So um, let's take a look at a. a says f of x equals the uh, square root of x squared plus 1. Remember, whenever you see this square root of x squared business, it's just the absolute value of x. Right? It's uh, defined to be positive when x is greater than 0, negative when x is less than 0, so on and so forth. So those two functions are interchangeable. You can just memorize that fact. Um, absolute value of x plus 1, of course, of course, has a, has a, um, a corner point, right? In this specific problem, if we took the absolute value of x, which is, goes through 0, 0, and we moved it up 1, it still has its corner point at x equals 0. So even though... Uh, letter A is continuous over the interval negative 1 to 1. Um, it is not, not differentiable on the open interval negative 1 to 1 because specifically at x equals 0, there is a corner point, corner at x equals 0, and a function is not differentiable at a corner point. Let's look at B. We'll do B in purple. Uh, here's a function of piecewise, and the first thing you always check for with piecewise is continuity. So if I check the limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x is equal to, well, left of 1, I'm, I'm this piece right here, and if I plug a 1 in here, I cube 1, and I add 3, I get 4. And if I compare that to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right, these uh, had better be equal if I want this thing to be continuous. But if I plug a 1 in here, I square 1, I get 1, plus 1 is 2, is not continuous. Not continuous at x equals 1. So then, therefore, it is not continuous on the closed interval negative 1 to 1, which uh, I just proved that it's not continuous at 1. Let's look at an example of the mean value theorem in real life, IRL. A driver enters the Pennsylvania Turnpike at Somerset, mile 110 on the Pennsylvania Turnpike, um, and an hour and 45 minutes later, the driver exits the Turnpike at Lancaster, which is mile 266. A week later, the driver gets a speeding ticket in the mail. What? What happened? And they weren't pulled over. There was no citation. And all of a sudden, they have a speeding ticket. Well, believe it or not, the Pennsylvania Turnpike is using the mean value theorem to give that driver a ticket. Let's do the math. So. Uh, assuming continuity and differentiability are, exist in this problem, we're driving a car, so I hope that the journey is continuous and differentiable. Um, what this driver did was they, they entered at mile 110 and exited at mile 266. And they did that all in one hour and 45 minutes. So if I were to find the average rate of change throughout that interval, it's y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, which is the change in time, assuming this driver starts, or this experiment starts at, at t equals 0, it would just be 1 hour 45 minutes, which I'll call 1.75 hours, minus 0, assuming 0 is the start. Well, if I do the math here, uh, 266 minus 110 is equal to 156 divide 1.75. Um, if I divide that by 1.75, I get 89.14. Now, the numerator was change in miles, so miles 
and the denominator was change in hours, so hours. What this means is throughout the driver's one hour and 45 minute journey, their average rate of change, their average speed was 89.14 miles per hour. On average, that means for a good chunk of the journey, the driver went above 89 miles per hour, and a good chunk of the journey, the driver went below 89.14 miles per hour. So what the Pennsylvania Turnpike is, is saying is the mean value theorem guarantees the existence of the driver traveling exactly 89.14 miles per hour at some point in their journey. Think about it. If you start driving on the highway, let's say at 45 miles per hour, you get right on the ramp, you start to accelerate. And then you're going at some points very, very fast, right? Because if the average speed is 89, that means they're traveling at 90, 95 miles per hour at some points. Don't do that, that's dangerous. But you get my point. At some point in the interval, they have to travel exactly 89.14 miles per hour because continuity exists. You can't go from 45 to 95 without first passing through 89.14. So what this, uh, what this problem is essentially saying is that the instantaneous rate of change, so at one point in the, in the journey, the driver travels exactly 89.14 miles per hour. And this is what the, the driver gets a nice award for, a nice high-speed driving award, a ticket for traveling 89.14 miles per hour because of the mean value theorem. How about that?